What's up, everybody? And welcome to the Lawyer You Know podcast, where each week a new guest will come on and give a summary of the true crime story or case that has captivated them. Many of the stories I will not have heard of myself, but they will give me the rundown, they'll give me the summary, they'll give me the scoop, and then they'll have questions about how it's going to be affected by the legal system. Can somebody sue or get arrested for things that have been done in this true crime story? And my first guest for episode one is a very special guest, my favorite person, my best friend, person I like talking to and hanging out with the most, my wife, Whitney Tragos. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. So what is the story in the true crime world that you want to talk about? Uh, so the story today is digging into the 7M cult, aka the TikTok dance cult, aka Dancing for the Devil documentary on Netflix. So I've heard of this. I did not watch it, and I've only heard parts about it from you. Mm -hmm. I thought it was Dancing with the Devil, not Dancing for the Devil. So I think that is an interesting play on words that I assume is going to come up when we get to the story. Um, and when you say TikTok dancing cult, is it TikTokers that are part of the cult, or is it one of those viral TikTok dances that came out of the cult? Uh, yeah. So it's a dance group who blew up on TikTok, uh, dancing for a cult. Okay. <laughs> well, so I, I want to get into, I don't want to start with too many questions right <laughs> off the top, but so like Jabberwocky style, like that yeah. show back in the way. Like a dance, dance crew. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I'm, if you've ever been on TikTok, you see there's a lot of groups that are assembled who live in a house together. Yes. They kind of like do content different groups. content groups. Okay. Um, and so that's basically what this is. Gotcha. It is a content group that was formed. Um, okay. I get it. So we got a content group built around a cult. How do they interact and what is interesting about the story? So the whole story, the, the, the documentary was what, where I came in. I had no idea. I didn't, I'd never heard anything about this. And the documentary centers around, um, a set of sisters who were dancers. Uh, they grew up in Michigan and they danced online as many people do. They were posting content. They were kind of a duo. Prior to the cult. Correct. Okay. Very early on. This is just their, their startup. They were two sisters dancing together. Hey, well, kings and queens, we're the Wilking sisters. And welcome back to another episode of What's Next? <laughs> seemingly very close and wholesome family. Everybody in the family seemed to get along really well, had, you know, a lot of love for each other. Were um, they religious? They have not expressed to be a religious family. Prior to the cult. Correct. Okay. The Wilking sisters was their Instagram and TikTok where they would dance. Uh, they decided to move to Los Angeles to kind of like jumpstart this dance career. They wanted to meet new people, network, get bigger in the, the modern industry. American dream. Of course, as many do. And so uh, they move out to Los Angeles. They're there for a little while auditioning, you know, different ventures, meeting different people. And they really start to grow. They, they start to have a huge following on social media. They are reached out to by B Dash. His name is James Derrick. huge dancer in a crew in this kind of content group had so many connections. So he reaches out to them via DM as many do, and they kind of start hanging out, getting to know each other. They're networking with one another. Um, and over time, B dash James and Miranda, one of the sisters, um, start having their own kind of conversations. They start hanging out more together, and the other sister, Melanie, is kind of not included in the group texts anymore. She's kind of not a part of their relationship. Okay. Their relationship starts to grow. Eventually, they start dating. Okay. Melanie, the sister. Third wheel. Yes, the third wheel. Um, starts to notice that Miranda is spending a lot of time with James 
as you would, um, and his friends, his dance crew, and his church. Miranda is pretty much all her time is spent with this group of people. So Melanie is invited to join a Bible study to check it out, which is with James. Invited by James sister. and Miranda okay. um, to come to this Bible study. Uh, she goes. She says in the documentary as she's talking about it that there were some immediate red flags. She felt like it was very manipulative, using a lot of religious manipulation. She felt like the Bible study leader, enter Robert Shin, who is the pastor of Shekinah Church and also the father to another player, Isaiah Shin, who is a videographer for a dance Group. Is that the dance group B Dash is in? Correct. Okay. So these are B Dash's people. Okay. Um, and at this point, Melanie is unaware that there's a church or management company, which we'll get to. So she goes to the Bible study, she finds that there's some red flags. She kind of bows out at that point from that uh group. Um Miranda continues to grow closer, and then over time, uh, Miranda cuts off contact with Melanie. So the family, Melanie, goes back to her parents, kind of voices some concerns about Miranda, her new group of friends, the Bible study, the church she's joined, and at this point has also joined this group this dance group you said at the same time as also joined melanie or, or miranda miranda okay. has joined the group b dash okay. james right. and the group um as the family starts to kind of try to contact miranda to kind of check on her see how she's doing they're getting a lot more resistance it's getting harder to get in contact with her she's being isolated she's being isolated she's spending more and more time with this group of people um that they really don't have a ton of information about right. other than melanie's strange feelings about the church and the bible study so then this leads them to 2020 which is kind of when it all came to a head for this particular family uh they're grandfather had passed away melanie and miranda's grandfather passes away they want miranda to fly home for the funeral melanie is also flying home for the funeral um and miranda last minute tells them i'm not coming sorry i don't think i can i just want to make sure i'm doing the right thing i don't think this is the right thing i can't go they all kind of got this feeling that she was being held against her will or for whatever reason, like she wanted to come, but felt like she couldn't in some way. Miranda wanted to come, but felt like she couldn't? That's how the family felt. Oh, okay. Yes, okay. that Miranda would be there, that it was really unlike Somebody her. Somebody must be keeping her from going. That there was Got some, it. yes, ominous reason. Okay. So um, the family bands together. Again, they go out there kind of to check on her. Where is there? Out, Los California. Angeles, okay. California. Um, they fly out there from Michigan to just get eyes on her, see her again, met with resistance. She doesn't want to see them. She's not talking to them, so on and so forth. So this goes on for a while. They basically are no contact. The holidays go by, birthdays go by. And again, for this particular family, that is not normal. They were very close. The sisters themselves had their dance thing. That has now been done. So they go live on instagram who is they sorry it is melanie and her parents okay miranda's so family sister goes and parents right. go live on instagram basically saying we believe this is a cult and uh we haven't had any contact with our family member we think there are bad things going on we need to get the word out we really want people to understand what's happening with this this is so real this is it doesn't yeah we just want miranda back and don't know what to do i think that's that's why we're doing this is we don't know what else to do 
I think that's exactly what they want is they want us to just go, go away. away. Because go away so they can just continue doing what they they're They don't know doing. who they're best. They don't know who we've been beforehand. They don't know how close we've been. And it's I like, know a person that came to our house. This person came to our house and sat in our house for over seven weeks during the pandemic. And this is her husband now. And said, you have a very different, weird family. You're way too close. And other people around us know the fact is we yeah, keep, we know that. that people say that we are too yeah. close. We're, 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 we're weird that way. But we have a bond. We have a bond that we wish upon other people that we can talk to each other no matter what. And somehow, some way, something changed our daughter in no way in the world that a religious organization that we can't control has controlled her now. After that, Miranda agrees to meet with them. Um, basically, under the guise of if I meet with you and I decide and I let you back into my life and I have contact with you, will you please delete everything that you've posted on the internet about negative about this? Um, the family refuses to do that. Again, they go no contact. This episode is sponsored by Prize Picks, and you all know how I love showing off my sports knowledge. And Prize Picks is the simplest and easiest skill based daily fantasy game. You can show off your sports knowledge by picking more or less on hundreds of options every day. And they make it so easy. For the month of September, one of the picks is Will Caleb Williams throw for more or less than one yard. Yes, one yard. And you combine that with others and you can win up to 100 times your money on as little as four correct picks. There's no guarantees, of course. And you need to make sure it's legal where you're located. Uh, I think it could be kind of a fun competition on our channel. Even we can post some of the wins and some of the losses, but only use amounts that won't affect your life, please. And let's enjoy it. Let's have some fun. Let's show off our sports knowledge together with Prize Picks. Download the Prize Picks app today and use code LYK to get $50 instantly when you play $5. That's code LYK on Prize Picks to get $50 instantly when you play $5. You don't even need to win to receive the $50 bonus. It's guaranteed. Prize Picks, run your game. Then um, they started reaching out to other members. Uh, of, I'm sorry, either former members, people that have left this dance group management company or family members that had um, people that were in it. Got it. All stories were very similar. It was a lot of cutting off, a lot of no contact. Um, and so they kind of started thinking, we need, what do we do? Like, we need to do something about this. Um, as they were kind of interviewing and talking in discussions for this particular documentary, a lot of information now has come out about this church. At that point, so mm -hmm. like before we get to the documentary and they start digging deep, at that point, they just think it's something weird. There's a dance crew, she's isolated, she's cut off from her family, and there's a Bible study religious component to it. Correct. Okay. And it's like a strange thing. Then they then things start coming together and they start to piece together that Robert Chin, who is the leader of Shekinah Church. Right. His um, son, Isaiah Shin, is a videographer in the dance world. And his wife is also a talent manager for a management company called 7M, which is also owned by Robert Shin. So he is the leader of Shekinah Church. He is also the president, CEO of 7M Management Company. So what it seems had started to happen is they were enlisting dancers that they were finding on social media, kind of asking them if they'd like to come to a Bible study. In that Bible study, they were talking about dying to yourself, um, basically, you know, becoming one in this community at Shekinah Church, Taking certain religious principles, twisting definitely them using a lot of religious manipulation, right. um, and then bringing them into this management company and kind of using them uh, together to kind of be like, if you die to yourself more and give more to this church, then you will be more successful in the dance world. So a, a version of the prosperity gospel, totally. Yeah. Um, and Robert Chin. Um, 
was known, I guess, for uh, catapulting a lot of these dancers. I was going to say, you have to be successful for something they, like this to work. And they really were. They were gaining followers. He was doing things a little bit differently. He was known for, like, using oldies and different type of music and pairing them. And he was claiming all of this was from God. So he, these people that... It's a literal, just modern day, oh. you know, David, what's it, Koresh... Totally. Type of, you know, I'm getting this. This totally. is what people want. And I'm getting what people want from God. Therefore, come follow me. So the mind control was evident for the Wilking family when they. It's funny, people used to care about like prophetic visions. Now they care about if you can make me famous followers, on TikTok. Followers yeah. on TikTok. Yeah, yeah, it's really crazy. Um, and I think that that was like a really interesting thing when I sat down and I started watching this documentary. Not that cults have existed for a very long time. Like sure. that's nothing new with a cult. But I think the aspect of using social media and this whole new world of like TikTok to fund your cult is is crazy. It's new. And it's just new ways. So, yeah, I mean, it's uh, tons of them have been based on sham businesses or, you know, something get rich quick or some kind of, you know, building up money by buying real estate, whatever it is. So it makes the cult look successful. This though is interesting because it sounds like he actually was successful on social media and used that to bring him in. It wasn't just like a sham that it was all money coming from the church or maybe it was. So, so what is the cultish behavior? Why did they believe it was a cult? What did they find out when they start connecting with people in connection so, with the documentary? So some of the former members that had come out of the doc, uh, out of the cult in the documentary, they were being interviewed mm -hmm. and very well-known dancers, very, like people I had seen on social media and I had no clue. I had no idea that all of this was going on behind the scenes, but they were basically saying they would go con uh, do content creation um, and they would pay Isaiah Shin, who is Robert's son, right. for videographer. Mm -hmm. he, they would pay Hannah Shin, who is Robert's wife, manager. for being their talent manager. They paid rent because Robert put the them all house. in a house together. Um, then on the church side, they would be paying a 10% tithe to the church, a 10% man of God, which Robert was him okay. so it was he was robert him. was him. man okay. of god so he he would be getting the 10 percent right. there and then another 10 percent offering and then um one of the men in the documentary was saying sometimes it would even be more because robert chin would you know give the well the more you give the more successful you're gonna yeah. be and so basically at the end of the day they, he put $100,000 in their bank account, and by the end of the week, it would be gone because right. it would all be going back to Robert. Robert so they were all making money on TikTok, and then they were given the money either paying for the services of Shin and his people or giving it to the church basically at the end of the day. So it was all this scheme to get everybody's money to go back into his pocket. Correct. And right. it all looked like it was different, right? It all looked to them like they were paying these different entities when really at the end of the day, all of their money was going directly back to him. So just for anybody listening and for you maybe, so that's not different than if you read stories about boy bands mm. and new artists, they get with certain talent, talent managers or money people or financial planners, whatever it may be. And that's exactly what happens. Totally. Hey, this person, that person, the other, everybody's getting kickbacks. Everybody's working together with the new talent. So that's not that unusual from that side, from the talent management side to pay my son and my wife and me to all do different aspects of what it is for you to be successful. And sometimes that's okay if you go from zero to hero, right? If you're a nobody band and I'm having to pay somebody 50% of every dollar I make when I got zero dollars, no big deal. If they get me 50 right. million, I still got 25 more million than I had before. But when you introduce the religious aspect to it, that brings in some other interesting elements, but so go ahead. So talk more about the religious aspect, the manipulation. Yes. Yeah, so stuff. I also listened to another interview from a former cult member who was saying, you know, she personally wasn't getting a lot of the opportunities that some of the other people were getting. And um, they were all encouraged to have no contact with their family. She said she was really struggling with it. And she kind of started to get the feeling that that's why she wasn't getting these opportunities. She wasn't really willing to I cut off it. her family. Right. Yes. And so she was saying that in a in a different scenario, if she was with a company, right, a management company who was not giving her opportunities, you would leave. But she said because of the religious aspect where she almost felt 
compelled to stay in it like it was on her mm -hmm. it wasn't the fault of the management company they weren't wrong so in another job you would quit you'd say i'm gonna go find someone else instead she's continuing to stay in this company and give them all her money because of the manipulation that's being you know she's being brainwashed by the church side of it as i'm listening i, have, I already have a bad <laughs> feeling about how people are going to feel about me when we talk about this stuff because <laughs> i know i'm going to be throwing a lot of cold water on some of the questions that are coming based on how you're describing this and where you're attributing fault <laughs> and how you're going to, I know what you're going to ask me if this is illegal or that. <laughs> I know when we get there, people are probably not going to be happy with some of my answers. So to say off the top, that is despicable behavior by Shin and sure. the church and the management company and, you know, taking advantage of people and trying to take their money or guilt them into giving your money and manipulating all horrible things. We'll continue to listen and eventually we'll get to what can you do about it, right. legally speaking? Um, and then another aspect I, that I thought was really interesting, just of, of a way to like keep to keep these people mentally feeling like there was no way out. Um, there were multiple marriages within this group. So Miranda Wilking ended up marrying James B dash. So they and it was like a her family said it was seems like a very significant thing. She got married immediately changed her last name on all social media platforms and cut her hair off. It was like a whole change. change. Mm -hmm. um, and they they kind of attribute that to like when they they lost her like she was not the same person after that. Um, and there were uh, there's other couples still to the you know, still in this cult. And what I felt what I found was interesting is uh, Miranda and James um, and a couple of the other couples who were not featured in the documentary, but are still in this cult. Oh, now, so Miranda is still in currently it. So it wasn't still, a happy ending to the documentary. Okay. No, currently still in the cult. There have been many others that got out that either leading up to this documentary, since the documentary and a little bit prior. Um, but I found it interesting that none of them were married. And the I- The ones that got out? Right. Okay. The ones that got out oh, were not you're married. So once you're married, you're like, fully yes. In. And it, it, I mean, it makes sense. Yeah. That's kind of becomes your whole life. What other things? I'm assuming there has to be more than just money, right? So other bad sure. things have mo most cults have yes. some kind of sexual abuse yes. of some sort. We'll, we'll say SA to yes. not say the bus buzzwords, but like right. that type of stuff, I'm sure was happening. Yes. So okay. that, um, that was a big aspect of the documentary um not specifically with miranda and her family they don't have evidence of that at this time at all but there were m quite a few other women that came forward in the documentary former members of shekinah church now okay. they were not related to the, the dance. 7m dance cult but in that church um and it was a very it was done very similarly um coercion cutting them off from their family when they're part of that church and then yes uh multiple multiple of them have relayed that it was they were abused um by robert chin okay this show is sponsored by BetterHelp. we know all too well from all the cases that we follow how important therapy can be and how there are so many people who need it and don't get it from jurors to witnesses to victims and even defendants therapy can be such an important tool in dealing with life as we know it it can also be great just to learn more about yourself or better yourself in different ways. Well, if you're thinking about therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online. It's designed to be convenient. It's flexible and suitable to your schedule. All you have to do is fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist. And if you don't like that therapist or want to switch for any reason, you can change at any time for no additional charge. So rediscover your curiosity with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash LYK today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H E L P.com slash LYK for a lawyer you know to get 10% off your first month. He was basically using his power and so, his man of so God like, status like to David Koresh, correct all the women that were just for him. Correct. So Shin had a similar thing where he would. Basically he would elevate the, them right, in the church. Concubines, basically. Yes, okay. if they would partake in certain activities. Okay, what about, and again, these are just questions off normal cults, anything with children or anything with like forced labor um, or- there is, there is an argument there and they have, um, former members have filed lawsuits about forced labor because okay. um, they're basically attributing the dancing, the working, 
and never seeing a dime because it's all going back as being like a manipulation so, of of forced labor when you say never seeing a dime the way you described it before was and by the way i'm not holding you to any of these right facts. I, we're getting as many facts out as we can from what we're what, hearing and yes. reading but you said a hundred thousand would go in their bank account and then they would give it all back correct is that how it was going yes so theoretically or not theoretically literally they were seeing a dime they were just giving it all away because they were being manipulated yes okay so made, made to feel like they had so to it's not like they were working without getting paid they were just yes. giving it all back yes okay. yes and and the fact that they couldn't look elsewhere for for work work right. or or uh like the videographer that was who the, was the videographer it wasn't like they could act, get their own and they were living in the house that was provided to them okay um so there was a lawsuit in 2009 um Lydia Chung was her name, and she was a former member of Shekinah Church. She sued for stealing. She alleged that $4 million was stolen from her um, in the same way. Yeah, tithes and whatever. Okay. To the church. Um, brainwashing and a, emotional distress from being forced to be cut off intentional infliction from emotional her distress. family so what, what was the brainwashing cause of action do you know what what did she say was it like mis fraudulent misrepresentation or something i think that she was told that she was going to be like the woman of god if she like did certain things so it was just based off claim there yes, wasn't like, like a brainwashing cause of action like that I she did not, something you okay. mean like that she did something so like, because like, he told was there her like to a title that you can think of that went with the brainwashing i'm just trying to figure out how you would like what you would claim on a brainwashing cause of action but go ahead keep talking but and then the we'll, we'll the, talk about the point is she filed this lawsuit in 2009 and lost like right. she did she never you know it never went anywhere but now fast forward it's you know 2024 and it seems like he's still doing these same type of things and i think the frustration for some of these women and family members is that like what what can you do it's is brainwashing is emotional distress is isolating someone from their family illegal is that something that you can like criminally get somebody for or you do you need yeah. so we'll take it in a couple different parts so number one religious freedom encompasses cults basically people don't like to hear that but sometimes you know, one man's cult is another man's religion, right? And there are differences and religions are more organized with more history and uh, more bylaws and things like that. But sometimes cults splinter off of religion um, or, or certain religious beliefs. That's normally how they start. It's twisted religion. You take something good and you make it evil. Um, and especially because people dedicate their lives. Sometimes they prey on vulnerable people or people seeking certain things. So mm -hmm. there is there there is a First Amendment constitutional protection, freedom of speech, freedom of religion, freedom of assembly, to do certain things, worship certain things, whether we agree with them or we don't. And that is protected. And in probably a lot of these stories we eventually are gonna talk about, we're gonna have to figure out what we think as a society, like, can we protect people from themselves? Right. That's a big question with all this. So yeah. I'm hearing you say all this stuff. These are all adults for the most part that you've sure. told me, I haven't heard you tell me anything about kids that might be different, but competent adults making bad decisions the law usually is not there to go back and correct bad decisions or let you blame those bad decisions on other people mm -hmm. if you're making a knowing decision. Now, when you talk about brainwashing and things like that, it's been used in the, in the law on both sides, right? Like brainwashing as an offense by somebody else, but also brainwashing as a defense if you're charged right. with something. I was brainwashed. I did this illegal thing, but it wasn't me. Somebody was brainwashing me. And generally speaking, that's not been successful mm. because like in the legal field, we have fry standard and daubert which is you know whether this you know whether you have an expert that's able to testify to something scientific is it generally accepted in the community is it peer reviewed has it been studied have they done testing is that testing recorded and can you understand how it all works and when you talk about brainwashing that's kind of hard it's different than like a diagnosis of schizophrenia or bipolar disorder or you know that you have actual physical problems in your brain that doesn't allow you to compute certain things or understand certain things. So those are two different worlds and brainwashing and otherwise competent individual without any um, dis disorders or deficiencies, sometimes there just isn't something for that. And the same as when it's been used as a defense. So like an insanity defense would be, 
you don't understand right from wrong. Mm -hmm. You don't understand the, the results of your actions. You don't understand that you're doing something criminal. You think that you're stabbing a pillow, but you're actually stabbing a person and different jurisdictions have a little bit of different definitions, but that's different than being brainwashed, right? Into believing that you have to give all your money to this place. It's like, but you believed it at some point. Right. Now you don't believe it. Okay. Who's to say that in a year, you're not going to think that the now you is brainwashed and stupid and you got brainwashed by the world or by your parents. And then you go back to Shin because you believe he's right. Cause I'm sure he says it's us against the world. Everybody's doing this against us, which proves that we're right. That's normally how cults yeah. and, and leaders do it, you know? Yeah. So the brainwashing element is really difficult to get criminal action for, but specifically for, you know, negligent infliction of emotional distress or intentional infliction of emotional distress, that would be something potentially you'd be able to develop if you could prove that they purposefully were going in there to cause you emotional damage. You had emotional damage. Usually you have to have physical symptoms. So rashes or headaches or oh. neck aches or trouble sleeping, insomnia, or uh, you need a psychologist or psychiatrist mm. to treat with, things like that have to develop. Um, and it actually has to happen to you. And that person either, either has to do it on purpose to hurt you, or it's so obvious they knew or should have known the actions they took were would reasonably have. likely to lead to that. And a reasonable person would also feel that way, not just you, like you're overly sensitive or something. Okay. That's not how most jurisdictions, now it's different depending on different jurisdictions. Um, so, so there are things that could potentially be developed there in the civil world, but yeah, the, the brainwashing thing is difficult and the, the legal world hasn't really caught up to it. Same thing with mental health yeah. issues took a long time to yeah, catch up and we're was, still learning. That was kind of like what I was thinking about is I, I feel like cults, well, first of all, I feel like a, the religious protections, you know, religious freedom. Right almost enables or breeds cults or people that are looking for financial gain, they want to control people, it, it gives them almost a loophole and a way around the law to basically scam people, be fraudulent, abuse people. And it seems like they're kind of like left up, oh, oh, we're out. So In, there are there laws like that they maybe have to have check-ins or are there some sort of points that need to be shown or proof that need to be shown that they are operating in a certain way to still be considered under the okay. protection of religious freedom? So there's two, two things that are important about that. The first is the religious freedom part. The second is the tax exemption. I think that you're talking about like certain statuses they have. So the religious freedom part, again, we have to be careful that just because we disagree with mm -hmm. somebody and their beliefs and what they worship and how they worship and the money they give and the dances on TikTok they do. We have to be careful because that's one of the founding principles of America that people are allowed to choose to worship who and how they want and like. Now, that does not encompass criminal behavior. So if people in a cult are behaving criminally, yes. then that is still a crime. And being part of a cult or in a certain religion does not protect you from that. What it protects you from is, I can say I have to stand on top of my head every day and give money to every and give money to the the animals that walk by my house, and I'm free to do that if that's part of my religion. Now, what I can't do is stop little children and take them inside and put them in my closet and keep them there forever because that's part of my religion. That's still illegal, even if I say that's part of my religion. Not how it works. Or my dad had a criminal case; uh, son got stung by a bunch of bees. They didn't take him to the doctor because it was part of their religion, right. and he died and they charged him and it ended up being not guilty. And that was the argument my dad made. So it's not necessarily an absolute religious freedom, but there are certain arguments you can make that end up developing and understanding, you know, where are the lines here? And we right. have to make decisions that we're not always going to agree with other people's religious beliefs on the tax exemption side. So that's a big thing yeah. right? with a lot of cults, religions, people, certain things, people think are religions or not, whatever. Um, but to be tax exempt, there are, principles and things that boxes you have to check. Okay. So you can't be for profit for any individual or shareholder or a person, you know, it can't be the Whitney cult where everybody gives you money and you make money off it. So even but though, but <laughs> if you funnel money through different things, uh, it's sometimes harder to connect like through legitimate businesses like TikTok, videography, talent management. Okay. Right. So like, or real estate. It's, or if you're just like, it's an offering. They wanted to give me well, that that's money. That's different. So that's, that's, that's separate, right? That's not he even. can't, claim that as his money from the offer. But what he can do is he can buy buildings and then the people in the church can rent those buildings and he can buy more buildings and then he can buy 
uh, talent agencies and whatever. And you have all this stuff. I'm not making money. He can buy a private jet that says Shekinah Church or whatever it's called on the side of it. It's like, that's not for me. That's for the church. This episode is sponsored by HelloFresh. And with HelloFresh, you get farm fresh pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. So skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. Because we all know home cooked meals are so much better for you, but we don't always have time to pull it off. But HelloFresh can handle most of the meal planning, shopping, and prep for you. So it's so much easier to make that happen. And with our kids going from this sport to that performance, having America's number one meal kit with farm fresh ingredients is clutch. Plus, when plans change or life gets too busy, HelloFresh lets you easily customize your delivery options from week to week and tailor everything to your schedule. Even skipping a week if you know you're not going to be able to cook at home. Plus, for a free breakfast for life, go to HelloFresh.com slash free L-Y-K. That's one free breakfast item per box while your subscription is active. That's free breakfast for life just by going to HelloFresh.com slash F-R-E-E-L-Y-K. So everyone in this 7M talent management company, mm -hmm. um, they were all very vocal about, this is not the church. 7M is totally different. They, it has nothing to do with the church. It is a totally separate entity. So no coming and it makes phones. sense that that's why he would want to okay. keep pressing that narrative right. because of, otherwise right. it would be turning to profit. Correct. Correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I don't know, maybe there's no commingling of funds. Maybe he does it a different way. But every cult or religion that is manipulating for money and basically stealing money from people somewhat legally, um, equally as reprehensible, but sometimes there are legal loopholes to this. They always have a way where somebody else is getting it or it's moving from one bucket to the other so they're not individually profiting or they would lose their tax-exempt status. Mm -hmm. Also to be tax-exempt, some other things are like you can't get into politics or try to influence religions or support different politicians like it's supposed to be separation of church and state and that's really what it comes down to at the end of the day and you also can't do illegal things right like you can't money launder and call it a tax exempt right. cult or charity and usually you're centered around some idea or charitable um action or religion like you have to be centered around that to be you know exempt and and get that status which is incredibly important and the way that cults are allowed to legally do these things which i think these conversations are really good and how do we want to deal with this in America? And what does it look like going forward? Like, how do we stop this? Right. I think it's a conversation that needs to be had. Maybe there needs to be more government oversight of some of these charitable organizations, but churches don't want that. Hmm. Do people in churches want that? What does that mean? Does that give the government an opportunity to be like, we don't like this religion, so we're going to shut them down because we don't want that? Because that starts crushing fundamental principles of being American and having the freedom to choose your religion. So drawing lines are very difficult in the legal it, world. It is. It's almost like a... It's like a who who does this protect more? Right. It's like, are we protecting people that could fall victim to manipulation and scams? And in everybody's mind, it's obvious. Oh, that's a cult. That's a church. This is fine. That's sure. not. But not everybody agrees on that. Right. So, do we want one guy or gal in the Deciding government to decide that? For I you. don't. I Correct. don't personally. So that's a major issue, and and that's something we have to think about. Now, what's interesting to me is as I'm listening to this and just thinking, like, okay, so what could be potential crimes? How could we get these people? So uh, RICO, the racketeering and criminal organization um, uh, statutes that were put into place originally to stop like the mob and the mafia mm -hmm. who are doing different things in different states. It's hard to kind of connect them. It's hard to pick just one little thing with all these people connected and how do you get the bosses when it's just the underlings. So it's been used um, in different ways, legally in interesting ways, mm -hmm. right? Or they, they turn on their legal mind and they yeah. try to be inventive in how they use it. And recently we've seen it come under fire with uh, R. Kelly mm. in his you know, music industry and the women he had in his houses and he would fly them here and there and some of them were underage and how do you really get this and this state and that state and they used Rico, they got him. Got it. Um, YSL, Young Thug, same thing. Is it a gang? Is it not? Is it a recording label? But they use all the connections and they charge Rico. Yeah. Uh, Puff Daddy, that's something that they think it might be coming down the hmm. pipe for him, that it's not just a drug thing. It's not, and it also can get you around statutes of limitations, stuff that happened years and years ago. But if it's continuing criminal activity, sometimes it'll let you get around a, tra a, a statute of limitations for one individual crime. And instead it turns into an overt act as part of the criminal organization, furthering a criminal organization that seems like it might fit with things like this. If prosecutors want to try to go after things like this. Now, 
I'll turn the question around to you, though. If it's a church and a religion you agree with mm -hmm. and you tithe and give your money, what's to stop them from doing, from somebody leaving that church claiming the same thing, that these people are horrible, they were mean to me, or, you know, there was abuse in that church and they didn't do anything about it, to say that's a criminal organization as well. They're manipulating people. They're opening up this Bible or, you know, some other book that your religion uses and saying you need to give money. They're guilting people into giving money. What's the difference? But that now people are leaving this cult and seeing it as evil, which I would agree with. Yeah. But it's hard. You don't want to cast a too far, too wide of a net to get real legitimate religious organizations, charitable organizations caught up and gone that. And one of the other reasons for the tax exempt status is they are known for doing so much good in the world and to society. That's why they're tax exempt. They don't, yeah. That generally, obviously not all of them like this one. But, but I just feel like couldn't there just be something where they it's like, OK, you want to file under tax exempt. You want to file this as a religious organization. That's great. Sounds good. If we get a call that from this um, percentage of people that are saying this is taking place, brainwashing is taking that, that their child is being or their adult child is being isolated, even though they're adults. Why can't there be some sort of investigation or like without it having to be like, why can't brainwashing and coercion and manipulation be prosecuted like a physical abuse? Because it's just it hard is to prove, right? It's correct. hard to prove when somebody's in it, especially when people are currently in it and they say they're not. And the person and themselves. They're still contributing members of society they're not like an sure. like there are certain people that were probably part of david koresh's crew you were like yeah. i could see that but it's like these a lot of normal people get caught up in this like there was a professor of theology from the university of hawaii who got caught up under david koresh which seems wild to me right um so i mean it, it's hard to it, one of the important things you said there was a certain percentage of people yeah because i bet you almost every church across the world has had somebody complain at some sure. point that their family member was isolated yeah or they, they're convincing them to take and i don't think you have the resources just sadly realistically right. to look into exactly. every single complaint i mean people and are going to be upset hold their religious freedom close to their heart sure. as you can understand yeah. as they should yeah so it's like it's a really hard balance it's not as easy as it may sound to snap your fingers and, and come up with a fix for this yes i in the documentary they called um I, you know someone to help them with legalities in it and they were told by the woman that you know, in cases with adults, they really don't do anything that as far as because it's not illegal to be in a cult. It isn't illegal to have a cult and it's not illegal to be in a cult. Correct. Um, and so but it's still illegal to do illegal things. in a cult. Sure. Right. But I just feel like because of that, like, you know, and cults, <laughs> I looked up the definition. I don't know if there's like a different definition legally for cult. Like, I guess if it's not illegal to be in one, then there wouldn't be. Frankly, you can call things are, that are cults that some people wouldn't define as cults, but okay. But most of the time, it's with some sort of religious, yeah, uh, you know, foundation. Those are the ones that work. It's the ones we hear about. Yes, right? because it's a, I guess, a good way to manipulate Absolutely. people. And and you can take documents that people believe and twist them right to to be useful to you. And I mean, we've seen this since the beginning of time, like mm -hmm. back in Last Kingdom, which is you know fictional largely. But like how the church ruled everything and owned all the land. Yeah. And everybody had to pay the church. And when you got married, you had to pay the church. If you got divorced, you had to pay the church, whatever it was, you know, the church always made money sure. off of it. So that that's the way to kind of twist it and manipulate it to use it. But I'll just twist it around a little bit more. And like a good salesman, you could argue the same thing for it's like, yeah. I bought this jacuzzi that I can't use, but this guy was a really good salesman and he took my money. Did he really take your money? <laughs> Is that illegal? Or did he just convince you to give him his money and it was a bad decision on your part? But if he and again, lied. I don't want to be insensitive. <laughs> I don't want to be insensitive to the people that gave money to this church because I do understand not. it's real, but yeah. I want everybody to understand where illegalities come in. If they're telling you they're a church and they're going to pray to God for you and they're going to do this stuff for you that they yeah. really you know, want to try to do and you give money for that, it's tough. But I also back to like if they being promise a, you a house and they don't give you a house then you have legal recourse if you have a contract being a an adult that enters into a cult unknowingly mm -hmm. let's say they didn't they don't well, realize when you say unknowingly well let's say it was unknowingly well they're knowingly entering into something you okay mean they, they don't let's think it's say a cult. they don't know that they're going to be brainwashed <laughs> I mean, what do you mean? It's like they're entering. They're going into this cult, not realizing that he's going to 
not let them talk to their families, okay. make them feel like they don't they're the rules. right. They right. don't realize what they're getting into. OK, so maybe when they go into it, they are, you know, what someone would deem a consensual, you know, right. adult. But once they're in and they're being abused emotionally, verbally, um, and they're being brainwashed. Are they still held responsible for the things that they do? For example, marriage. Let's say you enter into a legal marriage with somebody in this cult, but you were not of sound mind when you did that. This was under coercion and manipulation. Is that not considered when you're looking at? So you can get out of certain legal documents if you can show that it was done under duress or you were coerced, but usually that's not we went to this church or we're in this cult and both believe gave it, and them all our money anymore. Yeah. And that, that's the hard thing is just like, as you're saying this stuff mm -hmm. to me, it would be so hard to pick true from false sometimes. Like, could you not say that about other religions again, that say certain things are wrong and you stop doing that thing because they say you were wrong then you leave that religion or you deconstruct or something. And then you're like, oh, that was never wrong. Mm. They abused me. They manipulated me. But millions of people maybe in certain religions still believe that to be true, build their life on it. it you you got to be careful. Or are, are certain good pastors going to be caught up in, in this cult right. war as well? You know, where are the lines? And that's where right now the government draws the lines in illegal activity, which asking for money when somebody gives it to you is not illegal activity. Yeah. You know, that that's really what it comes down to. Convincing somebody to give you all their money is not illegal. It's almost like these cults and, and people are becoming so creative that oh, yeah. really the justice system maybe needs to get a little more creative yeah. in the laws well, that they create. It's always behind. It's always behind yeah. in technology. It's always behind on everything. Yeah. That's why this, you know, whole it's, media in the courtroom thing is so new and changing everything. Totally. But like if you look at Bernie Madoff, right, for example, he convinced people to give his money, mm -hmm. but he was supposed to be investing that money. True. That's what they expected. A lot of them had contracts and he was lying to them in emails, fraudulently misrepresenting things, yes. taking somebody's money, giving it to somebody else, but he was spending it all and stealing it himself. It's very different. Right. They're like, give this money to God and it's going to go toward the kingdom. And they're like, the kingdom is me and my private it is jet what I say and whatever. It is. Right. Yeah. So it, it is different. There's an element of, of knowing that they don't know where all this money is going necessarily. Right. Versus the people that give Bernie Madoff money, they expect something to happen with that money. Um, this family, uh, in the documentary was talking about how frustrating it, justice is for something oh, like yeah, this, yeah. right? Like, um, they wish that there was more that could be done. So they went live on Instagram, right? Fight it and back they, what it is, and right? they made this documentary, which I find so interesting in this world now, like, how do you think media and social media are influencing law. So it's good and bad, but I definitely think you fight fire with fire, right? And you bring the attention that they don't want mm. to them, to the table. And I think that when you have the eyes on somebody and it's, you know, similar with R. Kelly, enough people complained and you start to build it up and, you know, people care about it and they want to stop it. Same thing could happen here with media. Mm -hmm. Now media can be bad again in, in disparaging people that, and again, True. not this case. We have to right. realize that there are more than just this case that's affected, but right. maybe good people that, you know, you start to get disparaged because of, you know, certain claims that people are making and we have to be careful of that, but the media can really explode that. I think the media is a good tool because people can control the narrative of their lives. And when they feel like situations that are out of their control, like the government doing something or a lawyer taking your case yeah. or a judge or a jury making a decision in your favor, you can say, I'm just going to tell my story. Now there are certain, uh, you know, laws protecting what you say and if you lie about people and if you're trying to make them lose business or trying to interfere with their contracts or you know uh, crush their credibility or whatever it may be there are laws against that and you can get sued for that mm -hmm. so you have to be careful but to go out there and tell your story and there have been countless victims that have been found yeah. and saved and helped and defendants found and justice found yeah. through the media Crazy. and the true narrative coming out and I even want to say like through non-traditional media like YouTube and podcasts and TikTok and Instagram versus some paid for narratives on media that again, the government and big companies can control. Yeah. So I definitely think it's a good thing. I think it can be a, a useful tool, but just like anything else, right? Good principles can be turned evil. Media is no different than that. So I think it has, we have to be careful with that. But generally speaking, I would say in situations like this, 
Media can be really helpful to give these people some opportunity to get the truth out there. And maybe it's not going to fix them or, or take back what happened to them, but maybe it'll save somebody else. Yes. The awareness is super, like, that's amazing. I mean, just because, especially in, in this instance with a cult. Um, okay. So obviously the justice system cannot protect everyone right. from everything. We obviously, we need to Sometimes protect ourselves. Themselves. Yeah. Um, but is there anything you would say that people could take from this to either protect themselves from something like this happening or someone they love, you know, something like this from happening to them? Like, are there certain things we can do um, to protect ourselves? Yeah, well, I mean, I think one thing is it's hard to say when you say like brainwash or they're in that vortex, it's hard to get out of. But one principle always for us to remember is like the people you've grown up with and you know and you've trusted your whole life, you, there's probably something weird going on if yeah. everybody's telling you not to trust them anymore. Um, when a lot of money is involved, you should double check it. And again, ask people, have protections in place and people you talk to about this stuff um, beforehand. All that is really important. But legally speaking, if you also, every time you're gonna spend a lot of money and, and, and money is involved, contracts, agreements, True. emails, documentation, everything in writing, videos, using your phone, pictures, all that stuff's really important. Yeah. And if you can document everything you do in big situations and big decisions you have in your life, sometimes you go back and look and they may prove exactly what you're claiming now, but there's nothing to really protect you from yourself besides being a good decision maker, which sometimes people just aren't good decision makers. And sometimes certain people are susceptible to falling into things like this. And there's no just one, two, three trick or plan that can make sure you don't fall into something like this. Surrounding yourself with the right people, I think is the number one thing that can protect you from a lot of this. Yeah. But then what if you pick the cold people to surround yourself with? Right? Well, I like what you said about people that have, that you've trusted sure. and have loved you and that you love right. for years All and sudden, years. they're the bad guys. That's yeah. Fine. You might, I mean, not saying it can't happen, but you right. might want to look further into it right. before you, right. you know, cut right. it off. So, all right. So that's <laughs> all we got for the dancing for the devil 7 M cult true crime story. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have questions or comments, leave them below. Podcast is new ish. So rate the podcast. If you guys wouldn't mind, let us know what you think. Leave your comments, but until next time, we're out of here.